Hi, we're joined today by David Wolfen, CEO of Avino Silver and Gold Mine. David, good to have you with us today. Good to be here. Let's hear a little bit more about Avino and the family history that you have with that company. It was incorporated in 1968. My father founded the company, uh, so it's been a family-run business, even though it's public. Uh, I worked in the mine as a teenager, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, we've done a few expansions over the last 10 years, and we're planning our biggest expansion over the next five years, so it's, it's exciting times. That is, yeah, talk a bit about uh, the deal you have with Samsung, actually. That's yeah, it's almost one. 10 years old now. So they approached me back 10 years ago and they said that, that Apple and Intel were promoting, they know where the source of the raw materials come from and that they don't come from slave labor operations. And because we're a family run business and we're still in business, we must be an ethical company. So that's when we did a, they gave us $10 million and we expanded the mill. So we've been selling our product to them ever since. We truck the concentrate to the shipping port in Manzanillo, and it goes on a freighter over to Asia, and then they have it refined over so there. This is silver concentrate? So silver, the main... uh, gold, and copper. Lots of copper, they love copper. Samsung loves copper, yep. great. Talk a bit a little about why is silver so important for the future, actually? I think uh, uh, I believe it's a silver. critical metal, and it should be at such at one of these, um, uh, governments include them. I think it's coming because of using uh, solar power panels and 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 all the strategic um, uses for it. But it, it's also consumed, unlike gold. Like once it's gone, it's gone. It's not coming back. Right. Every ounce of gold is still around. So um, it's depleting. You know, these mines are depleting. You don't have a lot of new mines coming on, and we've got a huge endowment: three hundred and sixty-eight million ounces of silver equivalent probably 50 years of my life. So we're going to be around a lot, long time. Right. If there was an investor looking at, uh, you know, investing in a Dino, what are five reasons like they would invest in or what would they be looking at primarily? Well, when you look at junior companies, you look at management, what's their track record, location, where's the project, viability. Can they do what they're saying they're going to do? We've proven it for 50 years. So we've been there operating probably for 40 or so. Um, and we've, uh, uh, we're planning a big expansion. We've been through three expansions, so we know how to do that. We have positive cash flow, so we can fund our expansion. That's great. So David, talk a little bit about the recently signed community uh, agreement that you signed, and right. what does that mean for Avino as well? So in 2022, we acquired a, a property with a lot of silver ounces, 19 kilometers away from Coor Mining. It's called La Preciosa. So this is part of our five-year plan is to bring this online. So what you have to do, we own the mineral rights, but the surface rights, the farmers are allowed to use it. So you have to have their blessing. So in order to get a mining permit, you have to have the blessing from the local ejidos. We got it. How does so that we work? signed it. How does that work? How do you get the blessing from the people, the farmers? Is it like something that they sign? Is it like a common well, deal? you know, they, they want help and support. So we're supporting them. So we're providing meals and... and um, equipment to help the roads and we're helping with infrastructure feeding them it's a poor community and also offering jobs so we're training uh, oh and one thing i'm excited about is samsung has a huge esr budget so we went to them and said can you uh send some computers to the local villages they gave us 180 galaxy tablets and 50 uh television so we've been handing them out to all the schools and they're thrilled and the little kids, they're like, oh, I want to be an engineer. Oh, I want to be a miner. Oh, so we're encouraging that because uh, it's like an ecosystem. We don't want to have to bring people in from out of state because then it upsets the ecosystem. Plus, it costs money to, for travel. So it just makes sense to um, train and develop the talent in the local villages. Right. I think that's a great project. Uh, is there anything uh, that you would like to talk about uh, next before we just that we're looking at expanding from two and a half million ounces of silver equivalent annually to between eight and ten in five years. So huge growth potential. We're listed on Toronto and uh, New York Stock Exchange, so it's liquid the stock. Um, and another thing is when you ask a CEO how much skin they have in the game. 
I got the most. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Tell us about it. I got blood, sweat, and tears. I worked in the mine, and I'm the largest shareholder of the company, so right. I put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> there you go. I like to hear it. What was your, actually, what was the, the position, or what were you doing in the mine when you were a teenager? Were you, like, actually working in the mine, like, in the lab? Or in the uh, lab? They were teaching me how the lab works and the sample preparation and how they're mixing chemicals on um, extraction. And so it's basically the mill on a mini scale. So they're trying to improve the recovery rates in the mill in the lab. So okay. you do lots of testing uh, to get the recovery rates up. And that's so I was doing. learning that. Amazing. All right. Well, it was great to have you today. Thank Thanks, you. Pleasure.